Westmoreland, can you make sure? I know there's still people downstairs that are checking in. You send somebody down. Westmoreland, India Griffin here is not a member of Local 1506. She needs to switch over to the other side here. <laughs> Charge the doors and take note of the time, 7.30. All members, please rise to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have the roll call of the officers. President Mike McCarran. Here. Vice President Mike, Mike, Mike Magianis. Here. Recording Secretary Dan McDonald is here. Financial Secretary Steve Pasco. Here. Treasurer Bill Magnum. Here. Conductor Doug McCarran. Here. Trustee Jerry Block. Here. Trustee Luis Ontiveros. Here. Trustee Pete Laura. Here. Present. Okay, we'll have the reading of the minutes. The minutes from the general membership meeting for August 16, 2013. The meeting was called to order at 6.38 p.m. The roll call of officers was taken and all were present. Minutes from the July 19, 2013 membership meeting were read. Minutes of the August 16, 2013 executive board meeting. Minutes were read. President Mike McCarran questioned the executive board as to why professional security was present. The issue was discussed. The financial report for July 2013 was read and posted. Communications were read and filed. There were no reports of the officers. President Mike McCarran began making a statement regarding his removal from the position as Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Regional Council of Carpenters. Brother Bob Molesky called a point of order and made a motion to suspend Mike McCarran's report until after Mike McCarran's UBC 14D trial. The motion was second and carried. Trustee Jerry Block made a motion to adjourn. The motion was second and carried, and the meeting was adjourned. The minutes from the executive board meeting for September 20th, 2013. The meeting was called to order at 6 p.m. A roll call of officers was taken, and all were present except the following. President Mike McCarran he was 20 minutes late. The financial report was examined and signed by the trustees. 
The communications were read and the following recommendations were made. It was moved, second, and carried to videotape the membership meeting for safety purposes and to allow two professional security officers to attend. It was moved, second, and carried to follow the order of businesses set forth in the Constitution of the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners of America, and it violated the meeting shall be immediately adjourned. It was moved, second, and carried to support and maintain the UBC's supervision over the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters, and it was moved, second, and carried to a vote of no confidence in President Mike McCarran's leadership as president of Local 1506, and the executive board demands his resignation. And that concludes the reading of the minutes. Any additions or corrections to those minutes? Hearing, hearing none, the stand approved is read. A re report, a report of new members initiated or transferred in the last since the last meeting. None to report. Uh, communications and bills. I ask communications to be read. <clears throat> I want to ask the membership to bear with me. This is a lengthy communication that came from Supervisor Mike Draper regarding the upcoming supervision hearing to be held at the ITC. And it lays out other financial malpractice that's been discovered under Mike McCarran's leadership as Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Southwest Regional Council. To all Southwest Carver affiliated local unions, from Mike E. Draper, Supervisor, date September 11, 2013, regarding supervision hearing notice, the following letter has been mailed to all members and local unions affiliated with the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters, and I am sending it to you for your information. Any questions from members can be directed to the Regional Council Office. Thank you. From the Office of General Vice President Douglas J. Baines to all members of local unions affiliated with the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters from Douglas J. Baines regarding notice of supervision hearing date September 11th. Dates and time, October 16th, 16th and 17th, 2013 from 8.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. October 18th, 2013, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Location, UBC International Training Center, 6801 Placid Street, Las Vegas, Nevada. The purpose of this letter is to advise all members that a supervision hearing will be held over three consecutive days on October 16th, 16th, 17th, and uh, October 16th and 17th, 2013. There will be three sessions. 8.30 to 11.30 a.m., 1.30 to 4.30 p.m., 6 to 9 p.m. On October 18, 2013, there will be two sessions, 8.30 to 11 a.m. and 1.30 to 4.30 p.m. The hearing will be held at the Grand Ballroom in the United Brotherhood Carpenters International Training Center located at 6801 Plaza Street, Las Vegas. All members of local unions affiliated with the Southwest Regional Council can attend and testify if they choose. Individuals who are not UBC members will not, not be allowed to attend. The hearing shall consist of Chairman Dennis Donahue, Donahue Mike Pelly, and Bill Watercott. They are Executive Secretary Treasurers from regional councils outside of the Western District of UBC, which is where the Southwest Council is located. They're, they will preside over the supervision hearing and independently report the hearing committee's recommendations and findings to the UBC General Executive Board and Southwest Council. The chairman ha shall have the authority to extend or shorten hours and days as necessary. The purpose of the hearing will be to determine whether supervision over the Southwest Council should continue. The grounds that the hearing committee will consider are those set forth in my July 19, 2013 letter and in this letter which details additional instances of misconduct that continue, continuing the supervision can correct and prevent in the future. The in introduction to those charges. The UBC imposed emergency supervision over the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters on July 19, 2013. I conducted an emergency investigation in days of the resignation of Southwest Regional Council's Chief of Staff, Justin Weider. Brother Weidner and others provided invaluable evidence and insight into the dysfunction and autocratic leadership of Southwest Council's Executive Secretary Treasurer Mike McCarran, which had taken it far from sound fiscal, democratic, and orderly management. 
That's Mike McCarran, then Executive Secretary Treasurer of the Southwest Regional Council, his brother to President Douglas McCarran. I was granted dispensation to assume the powers of the General President to determine whether to ex exercise supervisory, supervisory authority over the UBC Constitution with respect to the Southwest Council. What I found required immediate action and is set, set forth in my July 19th letter. Accordingly, I have placed the Southwest Council under emergency supervision and appointed Western District Vice President Mike Draper as supervisor. Since imposing supervision, the UBC has uncovered even more information that is detrimental to the interests of the UBC, the Southwest Council, and its membership. For example, Supervisor Draper uncovered hundreds of thousands of dollars in additional head, hidden costs, as well as wasteful and unapproved expenditures. <laughs> The financial mismanagement, lack of democratic process, and autocratic rule by ESP Mike McCarran was widespread and financially damaging to the council and its membership. So much so that the so much so that the Southwest Council's own executive committee, who had been in the dark about Mike McCarran's actions, voted unanimously to approve, support, and maintain supervision. The executive committee also voted unanim unanimously to seek recovery of the over $260,000 for Mike McCarran, for Mike McCarran related to the illegal lease transactions he entered into and will consider seeking further recoveries as well. Section two, financial malpractice and bill regularities, irregularities. Lines of credit to company, council, collateral. ESP Mike McCarran unilaterally pledged billions of dollars to the Southwest Council's assets in form of certificates of deposit, to provide collateral for lines of credit extended by the bank to the following contractors, Santa Clarita Interiors, Best Interiors, Garner Morrison, and Town Construction. Without these pledged CDs, the banks would not have given contractors lines of credit. The total amount currently pledged is almost $3 million. Currently, there remain extensions of collateral of uh, $2.2 million to Best Interiors, 400,000 to Garner Morrison, 100,000 to county construction. The purpose of these extensions of collateral remain unclear, but with the extension of collateral to town construction, we learned that one of the owners used the line of credit to pay off his private airline hangar debt, fund his divorce settlement, and to purchase his father's interest in the company. This violates the objects set forth in the bylaws because the purpose of the financial assistance had nothing to do with serving the interests of the members. And none of these collateral transactions did the Southwest Council's uh, Southwest, excuse me, Southwest Council properly document or obtain security from the contractor. The Southwest Council also pledged two hundred thousand dollars to Santa Clarita Interiors. This amount has been totally lost. After the contractor defaulted on its line of credit, the bank say seized the entire pledged CD. The contractor then declared bankruptcy without any proper document documentation for security from the contractor, the Southwest Council has no recourse to recover on its $200,000 loss. In each of these significant financial transactions, EST Mike McCarran acted without the, the advice of financial advisor and against the advice of the Southwest attorneys. For instance, based on prior financial transactions involving pledged collateral that was converted into secured into a secured loan to John Jordan, EST McCarran knew that he should consult the financial advisor and legal counsel to properly structure the document and document these types of financial transactions. EST Mike McCarran's failure to disclose such transactions or seek approval from the Southwest Council's executive committee and failure to disclose or adequately disclose transactions to the trustees uh, to the Southwest Council's trustees violated the Southwest Council's bylaws. All council business is to be supervised by the executive committee and all council funds are to be supervised by the trustees. Not only did EST Mike McCarran violate the council's bylaws in expending its assets, he also violated section 501 of the Labor Management Report and Disclosure Act, which requires, among other duties, union, official, uh, union officials to expend union assets in conformity with its bylaws. Also, with respect to Best Interior's extension of credit, the ESD affirmatively represented and directed others to misrepresent to the bank that the executive committee had approved the transactions. This was false. The executive committee had no knowledge of Best Interior's transactions, of the Best Interior transactions. Section B, 
Southwest <coughs> Council EST fails to provide receipts or adequate documentation for credit card expenses. The Southwest Council has given credit cards to certain officers and employees to protect, to protect against improper credit card use. The Southwest Council policies and practices require its officers and employees to submit credit card receipts for all job-related expenses or provide a lost receipt form explaining the, uh, explaining the charge. These policies and practices were violated. For example, over substantial periods of time, EST Mike McCarran failed to provide any receipts to support his credit card expenses. For instance, fiscal years ending June 30, 2010 and 13, EST Mike McCarran, McCarran provided absolutely no receipts to back up his credit card expenses. EST McCarran also provided no loss receipt forms covering this period. The amounts paid by the Southwest Regional Council without receipts for these periods exceeded $115,000. Uh, while EST McCarran did provide some credit card receipts in other years, the receipts were routinely incomplete. For instance, EST McCarran failed to provide receipts in fiscal years ending June 30, 2012 for 30% of the credit card charges, which totaled over $15,000, and in fiscal year ending June 30, 2011, for 34% of credit card charges, which total over $17,000. Without receipts, the council has no way to verify or whether any of these credit card purchase, purchases were proper. Section C, no investment real estate advisor or manager. Fiscal year ending June 30th, 2012, the Southwest Council had almost $250 million in assets including over $95 million in cardinal securities and over $125 million in real estate holdings. Because EST Mike McCarran did not want anyone questioning his unilateral hand of handling of Southwest Council's investments and assets, he refused to employ investment professionals to monitor or advise the council on how to prudently manage these substantial holdings. EST Mike McCarran had no special training or expertise <coughs> managing or investing these amounts or types of assets. EST Mike McCarran also kept the council's executive committee and trustees in the dark about how he monitored, invested, and managed these substantial financial assets. <coughs> council engages in numerous prohibited transactions with the Southwest Carpenter Training Trust. Over the years, Mike <coughs> Over the years, the Southwest Council would lease existing and or build new training facilities to lease to the training trust. EST Mike McCarran would unilaterally decide which rents the Southwest Council would charge the training fund and for the majority of properties leased to the training trust, to lease to the training trust overcharged rents. This violates ERISA because EST Mike McCarran refused to believe the two independent appraisals, a third review, and then a fourth review was obtained, all confirming the Southwest had overcharged rents. Consequently, the Southwest Council was forced to repay over $5 million in overcharged rents and interest. In none of these transactions did EST Mike McCarran disclose to or receive formal approval from the Southwest Council's Executive Committee. In none of these lease transactions did Southwest Council's EST disclose to or seek approval from the Southwest Council's trustees. These failures violated the Southwest Council's bylaws. All of the council businesses to be supervised by the executive committee and all council properties are to be supervised by the trustees. EST also required, was also required to present all bills to the Southwest Council's trustees for investigation before payment. However, when EST Mike McCarran received the training fund trust bills for over $5 million, he could not submit them to the trustees for investigation. Instead, he unilaterally and immediately sent them two checks for the entire amount bill, and then finally notified the Southwest Council's Executive Committee. And then when he finally notified the Southwest Council's Executive Committee, he failed to disclose that interest had been paid. This violates the Southwest Council's bylaws and also violates Section 501 of the LMRDA. Improper personnel practices, <laughs> vacation policy, payouts. At the beginning of each year, EST Mike McCarran front-loaded all fronts, 
front loaded all staff a three weeks vacation before any days were actually worked. An employee could take three weeks of vacation in February and if let go in March, that employee would have already used their entire year's worth of vacation before actually having earned it. This does not make sense, nor have we been able to ascertain any proper justification for this practice. In addition, Southwest Council policy allows for an accrual of uh, a three weeks vacation only. This policy, however, was never followed or enforced by ESC Mike and Karen. In fact, the pension pay, uh, vacation payout was used by ESC Mike McCarran as a reward system for himself and his favorite staff. For instance, in 2011, ESC Mike McCarran took, over, took 70 hours of vacation and still received at the end of the year a vacation payout for 90 hours of supposedly unused vacation time. Either ESC Mike McCarran stole vacation time or carried more than he should have been allowed under the policy. Similarly, Mike Holes, a Southwest Council Executive Committee member in 2012, cashed out 174 hours of vacation time. Either Mike Holes stole vacation time or carried more than he should have been allowed. Further, the ability to cash out one's vacation time was not given to all staff, but rather only a limited number of handpicked, uh, a limited number handpicked by EST Mike McCarran. You higher rates within days before the UBC imposed emergency supervision over the Southwest Council, EST Mike McCarran hired retired staff member Ken Moloch at $115,442 per year. At the time of his retirement, Ken Moloch was earning $95,000 per year. There was no business or legitimate purpose to hire Ken Moloch or to pay him that amount of money. When the supervision began, Ken Moloch could not adequately explain why he had been rehired and actually had to ask staff for things to do because he did not know. Within days before the supervision, EST Mike McCarran also gave Mike Holes a $20,000 raise. Brother Olds could not explain why he got the raise. The hiring of Ken Moloch and the raise to Mike Holes appears to be an attempt by EST Mike McCarran to buy loyalty in the face of an impending Section 14D charge, charges and hearing and thus was not proper. Also, neither the hiring of Ken Moloch nor the raise to Mike Holes was disclosed or approved to the Executive Committee. The failure to obtain Executive Committee approval for the hiring of Ken Moloch violated the bylaws. While, EST, while the EST has the authority to hire, he must do so only with the approval of the Executive Committee. This also violated Section 501 of the LMRDA. Lack of documentation, procedures for work preservation for the work preservation program. Each year, the Southwest Council provides millions of dollars in work preservation to its signatory contractors. DST might prepare and manage much of this pro program on an ad hoc basis with little to no supporting documentation or explanation. For instance, when the supervision began, it was discovered that DST might prepare and had given market recovery to a contractor in Denver in the form of a payment by the Southwest Council for all fringe benefits on the job. Within just a few months, the amounts owed quickly escalated to over $300,000. And because the Southwest Council had not paid anything, it was being threatened with a collection action. There was little or no supporting documentation for this work preservation grant. No one on the exec executive committee could explain whether or why such a grant had been made. Long-term parking in Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Denver airports, and the building of the Denver garage. For the convenience of EST Mike McCarran and Larry O'Brien, a staff member for the Southwest Council, the EST purchased three vehicles to be permanently stationed at the Denver, Phoenix, and Las Vegas airports. The Southwest Council not only had to pay substantial amounts of money for each of the extra vehicles, it had to pay the high airport daily parking rates. For instance, some parking costs exceeded $1,000 per stay. Looking only at the last two years of the most expensive stays reveals that the Southwest Council paid over $14,600 for such convenience. Also for the convenience of EST Mike McCarran and Larry O'Brien, EST McCarran had the training trust built a $78,000 garage in Denver to store the vehicle they used. However, they rarely, if ever, used the garage because it was not close to the airport. Instead, they continued to use exp uh, expensive park, uh, airport parking to ensure that a vehicle was close for their arrival. 
further, the Southwest Council had the training trust staff flown in, in, in to, excuse me, flown in and housed while they worked on the garage. Either the expensive extra vehicle purchases or the expensive building projects were ever disclosed to or approved by the Southwest Council's executive committee or trustees. This violates the Southwest Council bylaws. All council business is to be supervised by the executive committee and all council funds are to be supervised by the trustees. Further, neither the vehicle purchases nor the training trust construction bills were ever presented to the Southwest Council trustees for investigation before payment in violation of the bylaws. These actions and omissions by DST Mike McCarran also violated section 501 of the LMRDA. Chief of staff carried dozens of pre-signed blank checks. At the instruction of the EST, Southwest Council's Chief of Staff, Justin Widener, carried with them a dozen or so pre-signed blank checks. Using one of these pre-signed blank checks, EST, Mike McCarran, had Justin hand fill out one on the same day he received the bill from the training trust to pay the almost $5 million overcharge rent and interest. The, this practice presented grave financial risk to the Southwest Council. For instance, before 2012, if any of these pre-signed checks were lost or stolen, they could be negotiated by anyone for large sums of money. Without raising suspicions, after 2012, the bank was notified not to cash any checks unless first called by the council. EST Mike McCarran also kept council, executive committee, and trustees in the dark about these checks. Monthly uh, Section J, monthly flower bills. Every month on, a, on and on special occasions, the EST would direct that flowers be delivered to the Southwest Council's Los Angeles offices and elsewhere. Some months, the flower bill was as high as $2,300. Other months, the flower bills ranged from $1,400 to $700. EST Mike McCarran even gave the monthly flower delivery person a $250 Christmas bonus out of the Southwest Council's assets. EST Mike McCarran not only bought flowers for the Southwest Council's offices, in May 2013, he personally directed that $1,300 worth of flowers be ordered and sent to his sister's house for his mother's funeral, and further directed that the cost be paid for by the regional council. These flowers, uh, these flower orders were not.
in the councils for computer access to the building monitoring system for those who access the building. This allowed the EST to monitor the comings and goings of those who had no legitimate business. He had no legitimate business monitoring. EST Mike McCarran has uh, as a means to punish trust funds. Long-standing union co-counsel solicited new counsel without any authority to do so. Because EST Mike McCarran's unilateral actions and improper, uh, because EST Mike McCarran's unilateral actions were improper, the trust fund. The Trust Fund's Administrative Corporation Board of Directors passed a resolution condemning his action and warning him against further improper actions, improper intimidation, and threats of violence. EST Mike McCarran also engaged in a pattern of intimidation and threats of violence immediately preceding and arising out of the 14 D charges. On July 5, 2013, EST Mike McCarran and Jasmine Aguilar visited the UBC Director of Real Estate. Randy Sal in an attempt to intimidate him from testifying in the 14D hearing. Afterwards, Mr. Sal, Mr. Sal took precautions to protect his family. Yes, he might McCarran also made numerous threats and acts of physical intimidation towards the UBC General Counsel, John DiCarlo, including threatening that he could make him disappear. When the EST, when EST Mike McCarran's chief of staff, Justin Weider, heard this, he found it to be chilling and incredible. EST Mike McCarran had used his ties with Jasmine Aguilar to imply his that threats were to be taken seriously because she is connected to the street. Ms. Aguilar's husband and father of her children is in jail for gang-related murder, and her brother died in jail awaiting trial on murder. Ms. Aguilar, in a reported court decision, was driving a car and present when her brother was arrested for murder. Because of first-hand knowledge about the irrational, erratic, and threatening behavior, the Southwest Council's Chief of Staff, Justin Widener, resigned on July 15, 2013. During the last few months of employment, Mr. Widener saw the rapid deterioration of EST Mike McCarran's mental, ability, uh, mental capabilities <coughs> and ability to function as the leader of the largest regional council in the UBC. He saw EST Mike McCarran's inability to stay focused on the business at hand and make rational decisions on important matters. Afterwards, Mr. Weiner, like Mr. Sal, took precautions to protect his family's safety due to prior threats and erratic and the erratic behavior of the SP Mike McCarran. That concludes the reading of the supervision hearing notification. Reports of accidents, sickness, or death. That's important. Appropriations of money, drawing orders for bills. Under report. Reading by the president of receipts from the general secretary treasurer for money sent to the general office from the district councils where such exist. Mr. President, that's your obligation. Hey, uh, you had the e board uh, meeting without me. The meeting starts at six. My the rules apply to meeting always started. The meeting always started, the meeting always I started with the president. Every day. Well, I can. Pardon me. I show up every day on time while I don't can. Okay, thank you. Election and installation of officers. Done to report. Reports of officers, delegates, and committees. I have a report. Go ahead. I want to touch on base on the communication that was read. There are several sections in here that I think uh, need a, a summary. You know, number one, I think, is the uh, unilateral and unapproved, undisclosed loans that were made to numerous contractors. Uh, Santa Clarita interiors being probably the worst example. You know, Mike McCarran made these unilateral loans uh, without any conditions to the contractors. They could spend that money any way they wanted, and uh, Count Construction chose to use that money to buy off his divorce settlement. To, uh, to, to spend money on, on, uh, on an airplane hangar. Santa Clarita Interiors, because there's no conditions imposed on that loan, went to bankruptcy, the bank sees the council CD, and we're out 200,000 bucks. You know, from 2009 to 2013, when Mike McCarran was removed from his position as EST, you know, guys here were struggling, you know, to make their mortgage, to pay their rent, Guys that I know here, some of them are sitting in the room, we're losing their families, and Mike McCarran was spending our money like it was his own. Uh, 
uh, it's, it's an unacceptable condition. Not only did he you know, do it unilaterally, this guy who declared last month that democracy is dead in the brotherhood, you know, he didn't disclose it to the executive committee, to the trustees, to the delegates at regional council meetings, to any of the members. But the other section I think is you know, outrageous is the unaccountability for his credit card spending. From fiscal year 2009 to 2013, he spent $154,000 on his credit card. Most of that is unaccounted for, all of the 54,000 bucks is uh, unaccounted for, never turned in receipts. So there's no way to know if those expenditures were proper or not. And I don't know what in the hell you're spending that kind of money on in the first place. Especially when guys are, are struggling. We lost our vision and dental, and this guy is, is spending money like it's going out of style. You know, we lost our welding program, and this guy is just giving this stuff away without any accountability, without any oversight. Um, it's shameful, it's embarrassing. You know, I put my trust in Mike McCarran. All of us here put our trust into Mike, and he violated that trust in the worst way. Put us in a position that could break our union. You know, and rather than standing up and being a man and saying, "Hey, man, I made some mistakes, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer to him," he doesn't do that. I had a report from Supervisor Mike Draper about his 14D trial that took place a couple of weeks ago, and in that trial, Mike McCarran made an opening statement, not under oath. Made a closing statement, not under oath. In his opening statement, he blamed his, his big brother, saying it's a personal blood feud. In his closing statement, he blamed Justin Wider, his chief of staff, he called him a, I think, insignificant little man, sloppy little man, who lost all his credit card receipts, apparently. But he didn't have the balls to stand up, take an oath, and answer to these charges. And uh, Mike, it's time to uh, to pay the piper and explain to these members. Well, you're the man, Dan. I guess you got a bigger set of balls than I have. If I do something wrong, Mike, I'll admit to those yeah, charges. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Dan. I've done nothing wrong. I'm proud of my accomplishments. Oh. Dan, nowhere in this does it say allegations. Mike, there's statements of facts. Documentation of that facts. I've got right here from the regional Danny, council this, controller. Danny, Are you kidding me, Mike? Danny, get, let's get louder. You, you can be louder than Mike Raper, can't you? Ha, ha, ha. Come on. I'm saying are there's done? documentation. Are you, are, you, are you done? Yeah, I, I had documentation my, at my trial. None of which was submitted a road. Can I talk? Can I talk now? Okay. <laughs> Listen, there was witness tampering at this proceeding. Okay? Yeah. 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 Okay, wait a minute. Where's that switch? You got to so does Danny. I second that. So does Danny. I'm not mad. Supervision charges that it say allegations. They could put anything down there. John DiCarlo scared the shit out of Justin Widener and said he turned himself into a fiduciary. And Justin, you're gonna go to jail. They scared the shit out of Justin Widener. Justin Widener, I believe it was uh, Monday the 15th. Uh, he called me and said he's resigning. That he went to work for Doug as Doug's assistant chief of staff, okay? So one day he's working for me, the next day he's working for Doug, okay? The guy's nervous, he says, Mike, I think they're gonna kangaroo you, they're gonna kick you out, but I think you'll be back. I love you, Mike, but hey, I gotta think of my family. These are all trumped up charges, they're bullshit. Like I said, I am proud, right, proud, proud of my accomplishments. Dan McDonald was involved in witness tampering, told one of my witnesses, and said, hey, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, say anything good about Mike McCarran, okay? True statement. Also at my trial, Exhibit 45 was a doctored email 
So they could do everything in this microcosm here. But this is Doug McCarran's union, okay? But this is a small little bubble, but there's outside of this where I'll be vindicated. We're talking about that loan to John Jory Corporation. Doug McCarran made that loan through the International. $500,000 unsecured, okay? He rolled it over onto me about a year and a half ago and said, you were responsible for this. And then we got it collateralized. One of the reasons for the loans, Best Interiors or SCI, when we would go after a contractor, we beat the living dog shit out of him. The guy's got no air in his lungs. He needs, he needs to survive. He needs a line of credit. No one would give him a line of credit. We did. General President Doug McCarran, in conversations with me, said, Mike, even if we get none of, zero of that money back, that it pay, paid off a hundredfold. And he was right. It was true. I fell out of favor with this man right here, okay? And it's regarding his girlfriend, Sandy Maloney, which he gave a $66,000 increase to and a company car, and she's working in my building. And I said, hey, Doug, that's wrong. And that's a true statement, true statement. Those loans with the JATC, not loans, but those rental agreements, a lot of them that I, I had inherited from my brother, Doug McCarran. Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh, Doug. You can laugh here all you want. You know, you know, you know the story. You know the truth. Hey, if you're tapping here, it looks like you're a little nervous. Yeah, I got something I want to say. Go ahead. Can I am okay. for it. Look, I'll tell you this. That's not true about John Jory. It wasn't an international loan on John Jory. You know it, okay? And all your credit card receipts, where are they? Justin Widener's got it, Doug. Oh, okay. Yeah. Justin yeah. Widener's got it. All right. That's yeah. there, there, there was no testimony of that at the trial. Did you did you bring Justin Wire up? Did you testify at the trial, Mike? No, I didn't. You bring up ten witnesses. Hey, hey and you know what? Can you have? Can you? Who has the floor here? Well, you said I could have the floor. Okay. <laughs> well, well, hey, and it's going to be a debate. And, and how are we going to do it? If, if we want to talk about girlfriends, we can talk yeah. about girlfriends. Sandy, <laughs> Sandy Maloney's not my girlfriend. We oh, went. Okay. We went up to the trust fund. All right. We say four and a half million dollars a year at the trust fund. Family and fight. Not money. Family so, fight. So, so look, yeah. hey, why didn't you visit your mother when she was dying in the hospital? She broke her hip and hey, broke her. I don't, I don't, I don't hey, believe this. You, you didn't need to visit your mother. I don't believe this. Mike, this is some order, please. We don't want to leave it. Mike, it's order on the order. Mike, it's order. Mike, it's order. Mike, Mike, it's what it's all about. It's about a fucking family squabble. That's what it's all about. It's about an abuse of power. That's what it's all about. Right, Mike, Mike. We're spending our, our funds. I mean, come on, let's get back to business. The power here. is right here. Okay? Yeah. It's standing right here. The executive committee was never notified of any of those loans at all. That's bullshit. That, that's the truth. There's a couple executive committee members here that can tell you the same thing. They all testified. The executive committee of the regional council went on record to go against you and, and have the international in there as, as the supervision. Once Mike, in, uh, Mike Draper, when he met with my executive committee, the first thing out of his mouth that it's in the minutes was, I fired Mike Oles and removed him from the executive committee. Now I want to take a vote to continue the supervision. He scared the shit out of everybody. Every agent and organizer in this room is afraid of losing their job. Okay? This is a cross between the Nazi Gestapo and the Mafia. Go ahead and laugh, Dan. That's what it is. What I said before, democracy in this brotherhood is dead, and this is the man that killed it. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. Okay, let me say something. You know, look, I'm going to tell you something. You know, Mike said this is a little microcosm here, and this will be, you know, will, will be brought out in the courts, and it will. And then we'll see what happens. But I'm going to tell you something. The integrity of the international going in there, there's no question about it. There's no question about those loans, of what happened with those loans. The trustees, the management trustees understood it. And they sent you a letter about it. And you did nothing about the letter. So the $5 million in loans, the $260,000 in interest that the district council paid, 
it's got to be taken back. There's no question about that. Now, when it comes right down, this is all going to come out in the water. We had a trial up there. We'll let that trial committee decide whether Mike's innocent or guilty. We don't know what that verdict's going to be. If Mike wants to run to federal court, he can do that. And the courts will decide who's right and who's wrong. And that's what's going to happen here, plain and simple. But there's all kinds of, that, that thing that Danny read, the people that went in there and did that have got a lot of integrity. Now, the receipts aren't there. Where are the receipts? Justin Weiner, he could have brought Justin and asked him that on, on the record. He didn't ask him that. He could have called him as a witness. He could have, when at the trial, he didn't testify. He could have got on. He could have testified and said, I gave those to Justin Weiner. He didn't do that. He didn't testify. Everybody that was at that trial, his witnesses, they, they were character witnesses. They didn't say anything that had anything to do with the $5 million loans. What you're seeing here is a bunch of subterfuge. There's no question about it. And we're going to find out what happened. There's no question about it. The trial committee will do it. We're going to have the, the, the supervision hearing. Everybody can go to the supervision hearing. They can see all the, all, all the uh, evidence that we have, that we put forth in that letter. It'll all be there. There will be testimony. And you can see for yourself. That's what's going to happen. Okay? So, I mean, that's really all, I got, all I've got to say. But listen, you are the fiduciary as the secretary treasurer of that council. You've got a right to go to everything you do to the, to the general executive, to your general, your executive board. That was not done. Okay? To the trustees. That was not done. Credit card receipts, $115,000, man, uncalled for. So that was all on the record. There's a trial. It was held. We'll find out what the panel says. You are all invited. All of Doug's cronies. You're all if they don't rule in his way, they're fired. They're down the road. I asked people to testify on my behalf, and they said, Mike, are you nuts? If I go up there, I'm done. Doug? or Draper is going to fire me and my career is over. Doug had talked to all of my guys and said, you have a career decision to make. Do you understand? You have a career decision to make. You're either going to work for this brotherhood and do what I'm told and stay away from Mike McCarran or you're done. Everybody knows it, Doug. Like I said That's before, I am proud of, of my yeah, reputation of my accomplishments, Doug. And it's true. The Doug gave his girlfriend, Sandy Maloney, a $66,000 increase, gave her a company car, and it frosted me. And I said, hey, Doug, that's not right. We almost got in a fist fight in the parking lot of Local 209. He said, you may be nine years younger than me, but I'll kick your fucking ass. And you did say it. Go ahead and laugh. No, no, go ahead and laugh. Let me say this. Look. Well, hey, Doug ain't a liar. The, 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 the trust fund, I'm not going to talk about those allocations. I did not give her a raise, all right? They came over, and she's not my girlfriend. They came over from, from Las Vegas. We hired, we hired Martin Siegel and company to come in and do the work, okay? Martin Siegel was the one that set that up. Now, as far as me telling people, that, that go. I'm going to fire him, you got to make a career decision. I told Mike Oles that, that got fired, and I'll tell you why. I sat down with Mike Oles, and I asked Mike Oles, did you see the, the four, did you talk to Mike about the 14 D charges? Did you see the 14 charges, D charges? He told me, no, I did not. I said, Mike, are you sure you didn't see the 14 D charges? I asked him twice. He said, yes, I'm sure I didn't see it. Lo and behold, I get two other people that tell me that he was at a meeting with Mike where they discussed the 14D charges. And I told one man, Mike Oles, when I told Mike Oles, I said, Mike Oles, you lie to the general president and you make a career decision. Now that's what I said to one man, not a bunch of men. I said it to one man that lied to me, okay? So these allegations here, are correct that are up here. We've got people with integrity. I cannot fire, I cannot fire Mike Draper. I can't fire Doug Baines. I can't fire the people that were on these committees. They are elected at a general convention. All right? 
They're elected at general convention just like I'm elected at general convention. So what you're hearing here is false. Hey, uh, Doug, is it true that you are drawing your Southern California carpenter's pension and are still the general president of the United Brotherhood making nearly a half million dollars a year? Yes, it's true. Oh, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Okay. I'm, I, I'm, I'm no longer a carpenter. I got 35 years in. I'm drawing my Southern oh. California pension. And wait, I, I make $390,000 a year. Plus your pension. Okay. And wow. Plus pension. And you know, at the, at the pension fund, which I used to be a trustee, it was a case that came before the pension fund. It was a retired carpenter from the Southwest Council that was working somewhere for a church in South Alabama and was drawing 250 bucks a week. And I think he had a $700 pension. And he pulled it from him. They pulled it from him because he's working at the trade. Isn't $390,000 enough for you, Doug, you, you know, Mike, to be drawing this stuff? Mike, you're a liar. I'm a liar. Let me tell you something. Here's the rules of the pension fund. Here's the rules of the pension fund. If you're a carpenter, if you're a carpenter and you're working within the Southern California area, you can't you can't draw your pension. Okay? If you're working in Alabama or you're working outside the bargain area, you can draw your pension to, 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 to if you're working in Northern California or out of the area, you can draw your pension. That's a lie. And look, Mike, I, we'll research it, Doug. Yeah, we'll, we'll research it. Well, you know what? We're going to research it. The Justice Department is going to research Good. all of this stuff too, Mike. You know, hey, Doug, Doug, bring it on. I met with the DOL. Yeah, I know you did. I met with them all. I know they you looked did. at it all. And Doug, I, I think that there's a big investigation that's going on, yeah. and and I will be vindicated. <laughs> this is making history. Hey, you know what? For me, for all everything that I've suffered from him, all this bullshit, I don't care. I stand here and pull my pants down. I'm an open book. I'll tell you everything. <laughs> All the shit they put me through, I got them some thick skin. He called me. A, he calls me a coward. Okay. Hey, what about us? Hey, okay, this would be That's such right. an Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Absolutely. Where's the money, Mike? Hey, it's all oh, right there. Hey, it'll all come out. It'll all come out in the wash, brother. You didn't You're right. About you two. I, I, I agree with you. I respect both of you. No, guys. I agree with you, 100%. But it's not about you guys. It's about us here. That's a I agree. It's about our people. I agree. It's I agree. Me. It's about my channel and my vision. Absolutely. That have. Absolutely. Hey, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman if I can make a statement. <laughs> Frank Rello, man, is a, an ace carpenter, and he's one of our ace stewards. And, and Frank, you know, Supervisor Draper came into the council. He's correcting and has corrected much of the financial malpractice that's taken place over the last six years. He's reinstituted the welding program through uh, a, in our apprenticeship, which is one improvement. And as of January 1st, because of the money savings that Mike Draper has been able to allocate appropriately now that Mike McCarran is out, January 1st, we're getting our, our vision and our dental back. Oh, yeah. That's why we demanded Mike McCarran's resignation as president of this local, and we demand that the, that you do it now, Mike. Resign, buddy. It's I over. second that. I second that. that. Hey, you know what? That has no bearing. Who seconds it? Who fifths it? Who forces it? Mike McCarran's not going to resign. How's that? Okay. Hey, Mike, you can finish that meeting off, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mike. Okay. All right. Anything for the good of the order? Yeah, can you come up here, please? Hey, Mike, can you throw me water in? Sure.